Welcome to our first example for chapter five, although we are going to see um, that these problems are very similar to chapter four, so it will feel quite a bit like an extension from the previous chapter. Now, for this problem in the slides, we were given the picture that had a 40 degree angle in it. So although it's not in the wording of the problem, it was in the picture on the slides. So the key thing is that this incline is a 40 degree um, angle. All right, so we have this block and we are not pushing or pulling on it, but it is sliding down the incline. So it's accelerating down the incline. The coefficient of friction being given here means that we will have friction in this problem. And so we're going to make sure that we understand what that looks like in our chapter five um, process. So first of all, because we have an incline, we know that we're going to want to break our coordinate system, or we're going to rather tilt our coordinate system. And so we will have the perpendicular to the ramp be the y direction and parallel to the ramp be the x direction. So when we draw the free body diagram, which we've learned is always the first step in a problem that involves forces, multiple forces. So we know that gravity doesn't care that we're on a ramp and gravity is mass times the acceleration of gravity G. Now this problem does give us the mass um, so that for students who wanted to try it on their own, they could use that. I'm actually going to not use that mass because when we are on campus and I present this problem on the board, the slide used to say that um, we didn't know the mass, the mass was unknown. And I wanna talk about why that's important here at the end. So most of our problems will have a mass and we'll talk about why it isn't necessary in this single particular example but we can um, write in the normal force. It's perpendicular to the ramp, so along our tilted y direction, which means that we also have the y component of gravity, and that's going to be m times g times the cosine of 40 degrees. Because here in this upper corner here, because we're going away from the normal force and then down the ramp, we have that 40 degree angle in the spot that we're used to seeing it from chapter four. The X component of gravity is M times G times the sine of 40 degrees. And then again, because we have a coefficient of friction, we know we have a force of friction. It is extremely important that we remember we've been working with friction forces all throughout chapter four the difference is that now we can also write down in a more specific way what that friction force is equal to. We do not just want to use the point three as the friction force. We need to be extremely, extremely aware that words have meaning and that units have meaning. And this coefficient has no units, so it cannot be itself a force. We always need forces to have Newton units. So now that we've looked at this force diagram, we know from lecture videos, and we're gonna understand it more and more as we go along, that the first thing we need to do is find the um, normal force. And the reason we need to find the normal force is because it is used here in the friction thing. So in the y direction, the F net y equals MAY is our starting point always but the acceleration is not in the y direction. So here, the acceleration in the y direction is zero. So what we have is the normal force minus the force of gravity in the y direction is zero. And so the normal force is equal to mg cosine 40 degrees. All right, so we're going to use this result now and as I noted before you can plug in 2 and 9.8 but I'm trying to show something here about um, this particular situation. So now that we're trying to find the acceleration to find the acceleration we need the net forces in the x direction because that um, acceleration is purely in the x direction. 
So we are sliding downhill, which means the force of gravity in the x direction is in the direction of acceleration, and friction is opposite the direction of acceleration. All right, so to plug things in here, we have m g sine 40 degrees from the force of gravity minus, so mu k is 0 0.3, and then fn is m g cosine 40 degrees. And we get that all of that is equal to m times a. Now, here's where I wanted to point something out, which is why, although we have this mass, um, I didn't plug it in. If there is not an external push or a pull, when things are sliding, if they're made of all the same materials and the coefficient of friction is the same, on any given ramp, they will all slide down at the same acceleration. There's no dependence on mass because it shows up in all of the forces acting on this um, object. Again, this is only, only true if there is no additional push or pull force. All right, so what we have now, I'm gonna plug in the 9.8 for G, but we do have everything we need to solve this. So 9.8 sine 40 degrees minus 0 0.3 times 9.8 cosine 40 degrees is our acceleration, and all of that can be plugged into a calculator now. We get 4.05 meters per second squared. I know way off here in the corner, sorry about that. 4.05 meters per second squared. So I'm gonna scroll this down so that we can see it a little bit higher. And I'm gonna make a note here um, that describes that statement I said before. So if there's no push or pull force, so no push or pull force, object slides at A equals 4.05 meters per second squared on this ramp no matter what mass it has. And the key thing is that means that a two kilogram mass will slide at that rate, a 20 kilogram mass will slide at that rate, and we get back to this understanding that all things fall at the same rate. We talked about it for falling object problems. We had talked about Galileo's ramp um, experiments. And this is kind of reinforcing this idea that when we are not pushing or pulling on an object and we're just having these um, natural forces, gravity, normal, and friction, then mass is actually not a factor in that case. A steeper ramp, everything is going to fall um, at a higher acceleration. A shallower ramp, everything will fall at lower accelerations, or they'll stick there if um, the force of static friction is not overcome. But the mass doesn't matter in this particular situation. So um, that additional commentary isn't necessary to get to the final number answer, but it is something that we normally discuss in a little bit of detail on campus. And so I wanted to add it here at the end um, just to make the point, even though I gave the two um, kilogram mass on campus. We don't normally give that, that value. All right, we will see each other in plenty of other example videos that will look even more similar to our chapter four problems. There's not this additional philosophical discussion of um, the acceleration of gravity, but I will see you in those other videos.